Have you run into the scenario yet where like this has happened to me with multiple people multiple times? Like not just I'm not like targeting anybody in specifically, but like I'm assist. My my partner gets hit. They're on point. They get hit. I burst. They say thanks, and then they immediately run to the other side of the screen and get hit again. Yeah, that happens so <laughs> fucking often. Yeah. Like, you, you, get, you get like the you get the the breath on like you get the thanks under your breath. Like they are genuinely grateful and they're expressing gratitude for you. And but you can tell like their thoughts are immediately how do I get back in? How do I get back in? And then they get they get tagged again. And you're like I can't do shit now. And as the assist, I'm like I you. I got nothing. Yeah. It's like yeah. uh, the video of the, the goat that they pull out of the hole, and then the goat hops up and jumps right back into the hole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a perfect comparison. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Absolute Guard podcast. We're a competitive fighting game community podcast examining history and current events from the lens of the Arizona grassroots scene. Yes, welcome. This is episode 89. My name is Benny, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, John. And today we have with us uh, the X button and also Freezy. How's it going, guys? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks uh, for having me back. Same here. Thank, Thank you. Just... Yeah, so since our last episode, which was uh, with Honorable, the... Uh, what's it called? I want to say Project L. <laughs> 2XKO. 2XKO. Uh, they are calling it the the alpha uh came out and yeah that's what basically what all of you guys have been playing right yeah uh i've been enjoying the alpha since it came out like it made my thursday work week very slow uh the moment (laughs) i got the email my productivity went down the drain but uh it was all for good reason it's a lot of fun i'm enjoying it yeah same here my uh also, as soon as I got the email, dude, the school day was the longest it's felt in a while. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was. Uh, I didn't get a get the code myself uh, through via email. I did get one from uh, gifted to me by John, so that was awesome. Uh, so I did get to play play things a little bit. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to to really kind of sink in and play myself. Uh, you know, messed a little bit in training while I didn't play any kind of matches online or anything. I didn't feel like I was. I was competent enough to even, you know, go in there, especially with some of the stuff that I was seeing from other people. I was just like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a punching bag at this point. So I wasn't even going to (laughs) bother. I do think it's it's interesting because it's like, it's a versus game that's launching in 2024, right? Where information spreads so quickly and people's executions really uh, have have picked up in in, uh, competence over the years, you know? So like people are doing the bullshit right out of the gates. Versus, like, when Marvel 3 came out, like, none of us knew any of that stuff. Like, what, what that game was capable of, right? Um, yeah. So, and now nowadays, you have, like, the 2XKO live Twitter account, like, the dev Twitter account giving out B&Bs. And so it's yeah. just a completely different landscape right now, I think. I mean, Marvel 3, like, that, the X-Factor damage in that game was so ridiculous. So it's like, <laughs> people oh, yeah, had some to. stuff, and yeah. then... Yeah, you didn't really have to like, you know, learn optimal things because at the initial release, like, yeah, the damage was so so stupid. Like, yeah. <laughs> I will say though, like, you don't necessarily have to learn learn optimal things in twenty twenty four, but it is worth noting that like the we get the impression that you do, um, like from social media and everybody like do like all the top players doing all these hardcore combos. Like, it's the impression that everybody has of a fighting game is very very different nowadays, um, and. Whether that's good or bad is a whole other deal because I think I, I've kind of largely stayed off the Twitter sphere for this game, minus like looking up some B and Bs. But I guess people are discussing about how it's it's a little too difficult right now, and uh, I was curious about people's takes on like whether this game is hard to play. Um, yeah, let's uh, start with you, Freezy. Like just in terms of like your initial impressions, and then like any kind of my bad. Uh, difficulty or anything like that that you that you think about the game right now um my first impressions i am really enjoying the game it's been a lot of fun because i think in my heart uh, especially playing blanca in street fighter i just really love to lab stuff and do grimy stuff <laughs> and so this game has a lot of that for me um and so i could just like sit in hours in training mode labbing stuff as i did one night um and so overall i'm having really good impressions and i definitely think 
that this game um, is actually yeah pretty difficult, um, and I've we've just scratched the surface of it. Sure, we have TODs and um, these high damage combos, but what we're not touching at all is defense, which I think is a very important part of this game, yeah. um, especially with these early characters like Darius that are just super oppressive. Um, I feel like in the long term, we're going to need to really understand defense um, yeah. to play the game. But overall, I've just been having a ton of fun with it. Nice. I mean, yeah, typically, like, you know, the start of the game, offense is the easiest thing to learn and to figure out, right? Like, it's the, that's, the, that's the easiest thing you're going to understand is kind of figuring out what your character can do, setups and all kinds of stuff. And then defense is usually the last thing to evolve because people got to figure out, like, you know, what it is that you're doing, you know, until until people get experience against, you know, whatever setup that you're doing or uh, uh, those kind of situations, then it's a matter of, like, that's the that's the thing that's going to evolve the the last usually. So a lot of times in the beginning stages of any game, you're going to see, you know, people dying quickly because they don't know how to how to defend against something or how to deal with something. Definitely. Yeah. So what what about you, Maynard? Uh, we'll talk about characters in a little bit. But what about you, Maynard? What were your kind yeah. of initial impressions? Oh, I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I do like the availability of the tag mode. Uh, being able to partner with a friend. And uh, they made a lobby system very similar to like what Battle Hub is, but uh, honestly, I think it's kind of cool right now with just because of how the way they're testing it. Like me and uh, Freezy, the person that I'm playing with, will just hop in and they'll tell us which machine to go to. It's really small, really minor, but honestly, that flavor is just kind of a nice touch that kind of brings me a little bit of nostalgia, even though it's a brand new game. Uh, being able to go to a machine and match up with somebody. Um, but, but as Freezy was talking about, the, the defense was one of the things that I, I found very intriguing about this game. Coming from, like, uh, playing Marvel 3, and John, feel free to correct me because I know you have, like, probably the most experience. But all I recall was, like, really only having push block and an X factor as, like, a comeback. But this game giving retreating guard, uh, push block, which cost a meter, and, uh, and, a, and a parry button that refunds if you're successful, I think is a really great addition to... The genre especially because like we're already seeing bs with like darius and alawi doing a full chip combo like a hundred to zero chip combo so uh of course you do need about two meters to do it to get started but it could get negated by a push block so while we're seeing these clips and we're like holy shit that's insane like no one could counter that no you do have options uh if they have two meters you probably have a meter to push block so uh, unless you're burning it all, then that's kind of on you for <laughs> making your offense and then putting yourself in a corner. But I, I do feel like the game has some cool BS, and at least it gave you options to fight out to get out of the BS. Yeah, that's been that's been. We'll, we'll talk about that too because that's been probably the biggest discussion I've seen in terms of this game is in terms of like the combos and kind of whether you have anything that can like interrupt those kind of things. Uh, and just how how players and stuff deal with that because this is a this is a game that that I think overall like my impressions of it is like it's a very it's a fighting game for fighting game players like I know a lot of people were kind of worried about this kind of being too you know too friendly to new people but like in terms of like accessibility like I look at the controls and like you know there's no there's no motion inputs it's basically like all command normals and to me who's been playing fighting games for like over 30 years like i still cannot wrap my mind around a lot of the stuff that i'm trying to do and like and to be honest like i haven't put a ton of time in it so uh i think it's unfair for me to be like you know this is the controls aren't great because i myself haven't invested enough time in it to 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 be competent in it but my initial impressions were just that the controls were very uh intuitive but like in terms of like what's available in the game in terms of like the uh the tag mechanics and things like that. I feel those are the kind of things that for somebody new to fighting games, that's going to frustrate the hell out of them is kind of dealing with those kind of things. Like people were worried about Drive Rush and Street Fighter 6 and like, you know, you're talking about a whole another layer of of mix-ups and tag mechanics and stuff like that that people got to deal with. And then just like I said, like that's exasperated because offense is going to be the name of the game. So it's like those are the people that are going to be in the lab figuring out combos, figuring out this, and then 
they're going to get a harsh dose of reality when they play somebody that's first in fighting games and then they can't get that initial hit. Because then it's like, when is it my turn to play, right? Um, yeah, so what about you, John? What, what have been your kind of initial impressions of the game in, in terms of like the difficulty and just, you know, overall? Um, I echo your sentiment, sentiments as far as it being a fighting game player's fighting game. Um, I go even more narrow and say that like they made a Marvel game. Um, and to me, that is both good and bad. Um, a Marvel game in 2024 where the audience has grown, you know, due to like Dragon Ball or Strive or Six, you know, or Tekken, you know, um, the the player base has changed a lot too. So like when we're we're building games, like people are building games now for the the core legacy audience, the fighting the MVC two or MVC three heads, right, or MVCI heads even, um, Power Rangers, the people that love that stuff, those folks are older now. Um, so you have to cater to their, their tastes, but like also cater to the fact that they're older. Um, and I say that as like, um, just as someone who's part of that group where I'm like, yeah, I like, it's what Freezy said where like, it's like Marvel where I have, I have to spend four hours of training in training mode a day, uh, to actually practice this game. And I don't want to do that when I'm 35, <laughs> uh, yeah. when I was 25, I really liked doing that. Um, because it was like, again, the good parts about Marvel is that you have like a, you have a degree of expression, of creativity, of like ownership of your team because you are finding the stuff yourself. Um, I would even say that that doesn't work as hard, work as well in 2024 because you don't really nobody owns any like style on their team anymore because it's so easily shared on the internet. And with Marvel three, like it was just like reaching the cusp of that uh, that social media landscape, but we were not sharing videos or anything like that back then. Um, so it, it's it's very 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 different. I mean, we were sharing videos, but like it was not nearly as ubiquitous as just posting a Twitter clip in under two minutes, you know? Um, so I, I think it's the good and the bad of Marvel. You, the really, really high highs of like, man, I practiced this thing for four hours. I landed it. It's great. Um, I feel awesome because I landed it and my opponent, I put my opponent through a bunch of bullshit and it all paid off. There's nothing, <laughs> there's a feeling like that that's unmatched in fighting games or in video games in general. But on the flip side, you spend four hours practicing that shit and then your opponent hits you with their four hour practice combo and you have to just eat that and you don't ever get to land the thing you want to land. And that feels soul crushing because you're like, what have I spent my life for? <laughs> like, what, have, what, what, what did I spend my time practicing this? Was it worth it? And I think yeah. that as you have less time over over the years, as you get older and older, like and you have more responsibilities and stuff. For me, I'm like, I wasted that time. That's really bad. I can't get that time back. Um, but for, I think people that have more time, like the younger generation where they have four hours to sit and play, like they're getting the same magic that I got in my twenties. It's definitely, yeah, there's definitely a different perspective as you get older. Cause I'm kind of the same way because like, to me, like learning multiple characters at this point, like I'm, that's never really been my thing. Like I, I was able to do it on a very kind of, I wouldn't even say very competent level in, in Marvel 3. Like I got to a point in Marvel 3 where I was like satisfied with where I was at. And I knew that's that was my limit, right? Like I wasn't gonna learn the TAC infinites or I wasn't gonna learn these other like those Doom foot type combos and stuff like that. I was gonna play whoever I played. This was my team. I didn't care what the tier was or whatever. This is just what I'm gonna learn. This is what I'm gonna do. Right. And that's how I am now. And um I think for this game, if I am going to invest more time in it, it's probably going to be in the in the duo mode and probably just trying to play that exclusively so that I can just focus on learning one character and then I literally just have somebody else carry me. <laughs> Ooh, duo mode. I got a lot of opinions on that too. I think we all do. Oh, yeah, before, before we jump into that, uh, so... I wanted to just bring up characters in general. Like, who is it that you were playing, Freezy? Or which characters kind of resonated with you? Because, you know, at, as the alpha, you know, we only have the, the six characters right now. Um, that was Echo, uh, Darius, uh, Elawi, uh, Ari, uh, Brom, and then what's the last one? Uh, Yasuo. Yasuo, yeah. Yeah, so which characters did you did uh, did you gravitate to, uh, Freezy? And who are you playing? Um, first and foremost, just from seeing clips of him, uh, I was always going to be an Echo main. That character yeah. is just right up my alley. Because um, my 
biggest thing that I've always loved is offense, and he is like the king of offense and mix-ups and set play. Um, just being able to put your opponent in like three back-to-back left-right high-low mixes just feels incredible. And as John said, making them not play is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so definitely echo. And then um, I was contemplating either picking up Alawi or Braum. And um, as soon as I played both of them at Evo, I was just like, yeah, Braum's, I just love Braum. He is, <laughs> he's basic, which is definitely good if I'm playing Echo. Um, it's really good to just have that nice basic, yeah, I can do stuff with this character. And then um, him having a command grab um, was really nice for me because I um, just enjoy having more layers. So, uh, with Echo, I can set up a Sidewinder, bring them in, and then command grab them, and it's really powerful. And so, overall, I just really gravitated both Brahm as like a supporting character, and then Echo, just for his insane mix-ups and offense. Nice. And then, um, before we go over to Maynard, did you have any? Um... Uh, history with like League of Legends and and the uh, the lore or anything like that. Uh, to watch the Netflix show or anything like that. Did you have any attachment to any characters in that sense? Um, I love Arcane. <laughs> it's okay. definitely one of my top three favorite shows of all time. Um, hmm. If I remember correctly, I don't think any of the characters from that are in um, to XKO as of the moment. Echo. And... Echo. Oh, wait, Echo. The character, the character you made. Oh, wait, no, Echo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot. But, <laughs> it's also okay. one, of the, one of the stages yeah. in the game is from the Sorry. show. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, I know the stage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I, I, I had this idea. Like I had, I had to watch the show. So yeah. like, whatever you said, I was gonna believe you. So I'm glad I got these two to kind of like. Oh, I think completely forgot. <laughs> and then, uh, so and then I do play League of Legends, um, pretty casually with friends. Um, and I normally play top lane, which would be Darius and Alawi. And mm-hmm. of those two, I've, I Darius is definitely one of my mains, but I didn't really like um how he played into xko so i didn't really have an attachment but when i before that i used to play jungle and another thing is that i used to play echo (laughs) and so it's just another thing for me to just want to play echo is because he's like in all these places i just really like his like um kind of design i think it's really unique gotcha yeah i I always thought that that was interesting because like i've I don't know. I've probably played a total of like five League of Legends game. I think I downloaded it one time and I was like, I'm going to give this a shot. And I, I had some fun with it, but like, you know, I didn't really learn any of the characters or anything like that. So I don't have any any attachment or I don't have any. Uh, it's almost like even like Street Fighter, right? Like they put in a, a Street Fighter 2 character into a game and like people have expectations of like their moveset and what they should do. And then when they change those things up, they're like, oh man, this isn't the same character. You know, they're not as oppressive as they used to be, or they don't have uh, the BS that they used to have. And Uma. it's frustrating for people to kind of like, you know, hold on to that. So it's like, you got to you gotta kind of have an open mind when it comes to that kind of stuff. Because I always wondered, like, I know I know Maynard and, uh, has a big League of Legends background too. So I was, I was kind of curious in terms of like, how you felt the characters that have been so far put in the game, how they've translated from League of Legends into their like fighting game characters. Uh, I think it's actually really well done so far. Um, obviously, Braum, uh, well, maybe not for you, but Braum, Braum is a support character in League of Legends. So it's kind of funny to yeah. see him being like a frontline, big, brawly dude. <laughs> um, like just, I don't know, doing doing combat, doing damage. It, it's it's funny to see. But like yeah. some of the small like things, uh, for example, Darius is one of the characters I'm playing uh, in the mm-hmm. game. Uh, he has this big circular attack and the closer they're in uh, it does damage but it's mediocre so you want to actually hit them on the tip of the circle so they actually replicated that in 2xko where if you hit them with the tip you cause a debuff called uh, I think they did call it bleed in this game or something else but yeah. but the bleed effect in in 2xko in a fighting game 
it just adds more chip. Uh, so he kind of essentially became like a, a Strider Doom style character for me, uh, allowing you to get chip on a character, uh, additional chip, and then trying to find a way to just suppress him in a corner and just making them uh, bleed. Uh, Ninja Nam actually got it right. It, it was a wound in the game, so thank you for we'll that. But in, in the original League of Legends, it was an actual like a bleed, like a damage over time, similar to like Aki's poison. Um, but I, I think the translation came out really well, even though like they didn't want to do like a poisoning effect. The, the idea and the concept uh, kind of still fit the character and the design. So I nice. do think they did a great job bringing like Darius over. Um, Ari's a little weird. Ari kind of doesn't have much of her kit, uh, mainly because she's like a mage in the uh, original game. Uh, uh -huh. Her stuff is like tied to like the super. Uh, so the, the weird thing is like her regular ability, uh, her, her Q is a big orb projectile that shoots out and that's tied to a yeah. super. Whereas her ultimate in League of Legends, uh, a dash that goes around is tied to a normal move in 2XKO. So that part's a little strange in terms of like translation, but it, it works. It, the kit makes sense and they did a good job on, on her identity. For the fighting game. Okay. Now, what about you, John? Um, I, are we, are we, the question was just about how I feel about the characters in general, or like. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Just, the, just the characters in general, and like who you're, who you've been playing. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I came into this with like no expectations to play the game competitively, and it was just something that me and my wife were going to play together. Uh, so we yeah. were going to do duo mode out of the gates. Um. And so when we were, I don't know, my experience with versus games is that anytime you, you pick your favorite character, like if you play more than one character that you like, like, like as a, like you're, you're, you like you have an attachment to the lore or anything like that, you're in for a bad time because yeah. you're going to end up making a team that has no synergy. Um, so usually it's, <laughs> it's pick one character that you do like and then pick an, pick an assist character or just pick another character that synergizes well with them. Um, mm hmm and so like in this game i didn't have that that position because my wife is going to pick the characters that she liked uh so she picked ari um and okay. i i was actually intrigued by ari at first i wanted to try her first but since my wife picked her i ended up playing brahm um and so okay. i liked brahm quite a bit uh and then when it came down to like actually trying to play it by myself, because I did like the game quite a bit out of the gates, um, uh, I was like, okay, well, who, who's the best character that fits with Brom? And that's Echo at the at the point in t this point in time. Obviously, that's going to change. But I was like, all right, well, that works out well because I can just steal all the shit that Freezy does and steal all the shit that everybody else on the internet does. <laughs> um, so that's kind of how I ended up at the, with those characters. I, as far as like attachment to them goes, like I don't. I have an extremely cynical view of the characters in League of Legends. I've I've spent a good amount of time playing Runeterra, the card game. So I, like I know yeah. about them. I played Ruined yeah. King as well, and you can see the, all the Ruined King characters are in this game except for Pike. So like, th there's probably gonna add Pike at some point. Um, and like, it, it it they're they're cool, I guess. Um, I think right now what I see people clamoring for on the internet is like the weird ass characters like the beast style characters or like the big ass characters like people that are just not like standard you know i have a head and two legs and two arms and a torso <laughs> you know <laughs> but the, the problem is that those are the the best fighting game characters like translating visual design like it's a lot easier to recognize a character's limbs and stuff for compared to like whack ass normals and like you see those still like in guilty gear and stuff um and so I think that they're going to be building to that. But you had to kind of start with the baseline of like basic characters like Darius or um, I would even consider Ari a pretty basic character because she's she's Magneto. Uh, <laughs> like they all fit in standard Marvel archetypes as well. So um, one, one other point about the characters is I do want to applaud the dev team for taking uh, Marvel's notorious for having a lot of different styles represented in the game itself. But then as far as like effective styles, that's very rarely like it's usually like boils down to two or three different styles. And then everything else that's like unique falls to the wayside. Think of like Phoenix Wright or um, I, I don't know enough about Infinite, but.
but like maybe like some of the DLC characters because they didn't get any play time. <laughs> um, or like uh, Tron Bond would be another good example uh, to, to resonate with Maynard. Like you'd have characters that just are there, but they suck ass and they're like, <laughs> uh, but so I was like, okay, so how are they going to make a big body grappler work in this game? And they did, they made it work. How are they going to make a street fighter character work in this game with Darius? Uh, they made it work. How do they make a trap character? Like all the characters feel effective at their current styles. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that that is something that's not been done in a versus game before. Um, we'll see how that, that, that pans out over time and if they're yeah. going to even add any more crazy styles, but the styles that they have established here, which are all fundamental, like fighting game styles are well represented for a Marvel style game. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, um, well, I mean, you, you know, we have to, we talked about this on previous shows too, in terms of like the dev team and like, some of the people involved in it. And I know. Clockworks, the big one of the big names, big Marvel two player, Marvel three player, um, uh, Marlin Pie, another top fighting game player. I think Nerd Josh is involved in some capacity as well. I think he's part of their team. Mm -hmm. um, Apology yeah, Man, so it's just like, Uzi, yeah, yeah, Apology Man, yeah. So you've got you've got people that you know understand and have a love for for certain certain games and certain uh, particular fighting games. So I felt like that was going to get translated somehow, and especially because you know it's. It's run by the the canons as well, you know, people that have you know helped found Evo and and all that stuff. So I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was worried about that really kind of being implemented. It was my my biggest concern was kind of like how they, how were they going to do that in terms of like the controls and everything else? Because obviously, I felt like the the whole League of Legends tie in, you know, that was that's that's what was going to bring in everybody else, right? Like I figured the fighting game players were going to tune in because hey, this is being being uh developed by by people in our community right we want to see what they're what they're what they're going to make and how they're going to make this work and then it was just like how are you going to make this accessible to new people as well um i was going to say just real quick like in terms of the characters for me like again i didn't really have any attachment to anybody but the the people that i uh or the players or the characters that i i i chose i ended up uh wanting to learn ari and then Braum. those were the two that i i liked like Echo, I was looking at some stuff and I was just like, this shit's too complicated for me. Like, I'm not going to know what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> that's beyond me. So I was just like, a character like Brom was kind of like right up my alley. Uh, that's kind of who my, my son wanted to play. So I was like, you know, who else Who else besides him could I play uh, if we're going to end up playing uh, duos eventually when this comes out? Like, um, yeah, Ari, Ari just kind of stuck out to me in terms, of, in terms of her design and like how, how her moveset and everything worked. Yeah, I was trying to think of a character like Dalsum, and the closest one I could think of is Zach, who's a, a big goo monster who stretches his arms. So <laughs> he's not in the game yet, but when he is, you know I'll tag you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't have really. I, I think that's kind of a good thing too, is to not kind of have an attachment to any kind of character. So it's like, if somebody's not put in, I'm not going to be like, oh man, I, I, I hate that this character's not in here, right? Mm -hmm. Or if they're put in and I don't like how they're implemented, you know. Who am I to say that? I don't know. I don't even know how they play in League, so I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to look at it. I'll, I'll look at the character trailer and their moveset, and I'll be like, okay, this character looks cool. Kind of like I did with uh, with Dalsum in Street Fighter V, like when his trailer came out. And I was, you know, I didn't know who I was going to play. I saw his trailer, and I was just like, he looks fucking dope. I'm playing him. And, it, you know. <laughs> I'm just thinking of them as functions right now. I'm not thinking of them as functions. characters. And you know how well that goes over. Like, everyone loves to think of characters as functions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did, they did actually use that at the uh, interview uh, at Evo because one of the characters, uh, one of the like vanilla characters of League of Legends was Katarina. Uh, she has a move called Shunpo where she would teleport behind the op uh, opponent and they call that a function and that they moved that function over to Echo with one of his teleporting abilities. So they're like, because of that, she no longer really has a function, like uh, uh, an identity as that function. So she'll probably be redesigned later, and they removed her from the set. What? Yeah. And the internet didn't melt down like it did for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? Not at the moment, at the latest. Wow. <laughs> See, like I said, the, the, the audience has evolved as well. <laughs> yeah. To me, this is, like a, we've, we're, this is kind of a little post-mortem on Marvel Infinite, but like that game caught so much shit when it shouldn't have. Uh, like, Combo Fiend was actually like talking as a fighting game player, and then everybody who was super attached to the X-Men got pissed and that sucks yeah, yeah. but like oh man so like to to hear that 
uh, and to, just for history's sake, for people who aren't familiar with this, he, he did an interview with IGN, I believe, or some gaming pub publication, and Combo Fiend described all the characters as functions because you have like an air dasher or you have a big body or you have a, gra like a big body slash grappler or you have a character that does mix-ups and teleports and stuff like that. You can consider them as functions. And he was trying to rationalize why certain characters weren't imp like included in the cast. So he was, you know, Magneto's not in the game, but if you want to play that way, you can use you can use Ultron or Captain Marvel because they serve that function. And then what ended up happening is the internet got so mad because it's like, how dare you reduce our characters to just gameplay mechanics and, you know, ignore the identity and the legacy of these characters. When in reality, the studio was handcuffed by big corporate saying that they, they couldn't only, they could only include certain characters. Uh, and it was completely nullified by corporate acquisitions a year later anyway. And it was just all a bunch of bullshit. So yeah. like, how we would, the stance that we would take on this podcast, so like a lot of the mechanical depth stuff that we talk about, pretty similar to, I think, how Combo Fiend would describe it. But yeah. it's just, it d didn't resonate with the, with the audience at that time. So to hear that Riot is now like able to say that and not catch a bunch of shit, uh, that's cool. <laughs> I think it's also the fact that Katarina doesn't have as much of an audience as Magneto either. <laughs> yeah, okay. They, they, are making, they are making 80s revivals of Katarina, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, again, again, again that goes, goes back to the whole, like, you know, you have, you have characters that you've fallen in love with and, you know, you've played in, in various other games, and it's like when they're not included, like you and, uh, you know, some people, they feel excluded. Like, my character's not here. Like, you, I've heard a lot of that discourse in street fighter 6 i'm waiting for my character to be released i'm waiting for cody to come out and i was like that could be season six i was like what are you gonna do for the next four years or whatever people who you say know? that they're always like when that character comes out they're just gonna they're gonna pick another character to wish list for like at this point the game's <laughs> yeah. been out for a year like tough shit if you don't like the game you don't like the yeah. game don't, don't blame the character for it I think also another uh, thing is uh, nobody even liked Katarina in League of Legends, so she no. didn't. Even... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the one, the one other like thing I was going to touch on. I thought the, uh, I thought the thing that you brought up in terms of picking characters that you that you like, um, that's actually kind of what happened in Marvel Three. Because like again, like I, you know, I knew some of the characters from comics and stuff like that, and like my original like Marvel uh, vanilla Marvel team was was Hulk, Ryu, and Wolverine because I didn't know how to play or who to pick anybody else and they didn't have really synergy at all. <laughs> like I was kind of just just figuring shit out. Yeah. So and then like you said, like you eventually kind of come down to the point to where you pick, you know, the character you like and then you pick some some somebody or the other the rest of your team is based on, you know, how well they synergize with, with that person's or with their character's kit. So yeah. I think that's the for me like I said, I think for me, if I if I do uh, play this game uh, extensively, it's going to be yeah probably exclusively as duos and just learning my character and then just playing with whoever that knows their character and you know building up synergy in that sense or playing with my son uh, in that way. Can we talk about duos though? Because like oh yeah 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 I was actually about to say that yeah there's a lot there as far as like what duos ended up being. Um... Maynard, did you have a you have, you have a soapbox on this one? I got a soapbox too. You want to go first? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not like too intense. I, I will say it is a fun and enjoyable mode. Mm. It's not more than that. Like, <laughs> I don't think Damn. it is going to revolutionize the, uh. the gaming industry uh, or, or the fighting game. I mean, um, I do think it will be fun with like teaming up with a friend who doesn't know how to play and then like showing him the ropes or being able to teach him. But then mm. if this game ever comes into like a Capcom Pro Tour situation and they do mm -hmm. open up a draft mode, uh, or not a draft, I'm uh, sorry, a, a mixed mode of just duos or singles like I tested, I don't think duos will be used. I think duos is going to be specifically for duos. Singles will be singles. Mm. There's no real advantage that duos has. Um, I am wrong. So I did talk about this a few podcasts ago and I was like, hey, I'm hopeful. Fingers are crossed. I'm 100% <laughs> wrong that no, there's no <laughs> real advantage at all. So, you know, I'll take that wow. out and, uh, you know, I'll admit defeat, but it is a fun mode. I'm not going to doubt that. I, I do think it, I'm happy that they put it in. I'm happy that it's playable online. And I'm happy that it's somewhat easy to use in terms of, hey, getting into uh, a group of uh, a, a party with your friend and finding some matches, whether it be a single person or another set of duos. But mm -hmm. 
I think that's kind of its boundary right there. It might just be another situation of like cross tag where like if they force duo mode, it's going to be very limited entries and people will be there and people will have fun, but it, no one will take it seriously. Okay. And then uh, did you have something in terms of that, uh, Freezy at all, in terms of the opinion on duos at all? Um, just everything that Maynard said. Yeah, I, I think solos is going to be significantly better. Um, I will say um, I do have some friends and another friend group that um, they mostly play Plat Fighters and just other games, including League of Legends. And um, they got the codes, and I hopped into uh, play some games with them, and they were having a ton of fun playing 2v2s within their group. So I, I definitely think, um, and of course, using, you know, using pulse views and stuff like that, uh, it, it's mm. it's going to be a really good and fun casual game if you just want to play casually with some friends. Yeah. Even without any fighting game knowledge. That's... Yeah, we'll talk about like the the mechanics and stuff like that. Uh, if you guys want to elaborate on, on that later, and then what did you uh, what would you want to talk about in terms of duos, John? Yeah, I mean, I I do kind of want to echo both Freezy's and Maynard's sentiments there, where it's like. I, I don't see a visible advantage. I recognize that like maybe you could like take advantage of like double assist a little bit more because you don't have to you, like you can offload some of that mental load onto your your team team member and focus on your own point character. Um, but the cost of doing that is having a, a lot of coordination with your teammate. And that's something that I just don't like seeing how cross Tekken handled it and seeing how 2XKO handles it like they're both running into the same problems in my mind for me, which is like there is an inherently solitary part of fighting games that uh, that we all have, which is training mode. And when the game is requires you to lab for us, uh, like as versus game for like for versus game players, for fighting game players, it's really easy to just go in the lab, figure it out. But what if you have to drag your friend in with you the whole time while you're doing that? Because you need mm -hmm. to practice a punish or something. So then what ends up happening is you either learn how to play your, your friend's character alone so that way you can lab it alone or you drag them with you to training mode and you just have to kind of stick it that, stick it out. And you have two different people fighting for control over uh, over the training mode but dummy and trying to figure stuff out. Um, so like it actually... And then just in general, I'm like, okay, so what's the game series that gets people the most salty? Like the most the fighting game series that makes people the most upset? And it's usually it's a, in my mind it's a versus game. Versus game people get the most upset when they lose, but they're also again it's the lowest lows but the highest highs. And you take that and that's the two v two game. So now you have two people that are salty, or you have one person that's really salty and the other person is kind of shouldering that. And I've I've been a part of some duos already where like I have been the salty person, but I've also been on a team with someone who's salty, and it fucking sucks. <laughs> so like, I mean, it, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like. Like it, it magnifies all the best parts about Marvel, which is like when you get it right and you coordinate it with your team member, it's great and you like everyone's having a good time. But then when when you lose or when you're getting hit by some bullshit and you can't deal with it, all you can really do is just express that frustration to your teammate, and that sucks a lot. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, and then like oh, that's on top of like all the timing stuff and all the the coordination that you have to do with the team member. I just I don't think it's going to be a viable. Uh, mode for competition because of that like layer of cha chaos with it but then also like i'm not convinced that it's going to be a lot of fun at a competitive level for that reason for a party level yeah it'll be great but like if people really care and you know they have a they're invested in the outcome it's going to result in salt it might result in actual like infights with people maybe that's what league of legends is like when everyone gets mad at their teammate is that, yeah, is, yeah. that is that what that's like? <laughs> no, no, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Is like, is like yeah. we're you know the kind of the hallmark of the of the FGC and in fighting games, right? Is the whole mono a mono type of things, right? You're not relying on anybody else, and it's just you versus the other player, right? And yeah, you know, characters aside, it's uh, you take the, like you like you said, you take the highs and the lows, right? When you lose, you got nobody else to blame but yourself. But when you go through a bracket and you win, you, everything's on you, right? It's like I did that. I beat this person. I I went through this gauntlet of people. I won that tournament, right? And you have nobody else to blame but yourself if you if you can't complete that task. And now you're introducing that that teammate aspect of it. 
where, like you said, if your teammate's not as good as you, or maybe they make a mistake, maybe they burn meter that maybe you didn't want them to or something like that, and you're like, that wasn't the right thing to do. Like, that's, you know, I can see friendships being broken over things like that. Like, there's definitely been times playing Call of Duty all those years where I had, you know, we had friends that just were upset because they got this or to them they got bad intel about something right this per this character is over here or this opponent's here and then they get shot in the back they're like oh you didn't say that person's here and i was like well the intel i gave you was from a minute ago of you know unless he's standing there like more than likely he moved right and it's going to be the same kind of thing because you're going to look at you might see a setup and you're going to be like all right you got to block it this way and if they block it the wrong way you're going to be like why did you block this way? This is this is what this does, right? Or this is what Echo does, you know. Something, then, something along those. As lines. fighting game players, like we 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 played out the whole situation for after that punish, and then when the punish doesn't happen, you're like, oh shit, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> it's confusing, yeah. right? And it, it it it's like, um, I I just yeah, like we as fighting game players, I think like there's a lot of stuff like that we, we we pride ourselves on control or mastery of the game in a lot of ways and like there's very little like random elements to the games to, to fighting games in general yeah every now and then you run into like an item mechanic or something like that but like compared to like a card game where you know the entire thing is based around chance like every turn you have to deal with chance um for fighting games it's about having that like intense level of control over your character and so when you c surrender that to a teammate it creates like another layer of execution that you have no control over and that can be that can be like a wedge i think that drives that falls between two two players um so i just like no matter what i like to me the 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 duo versus single issue like it mm -hmm. i see nom typing in the chat here in regards to like challenging status quo and whatnot um I think that it's so early in the game's life lifespan right now because it's an alpha. They can fix this. It's very clear that their intention is to make sure that the two v two is a viable mode, so they can try to fix it. I just, yeah. I don't. I know that as it's currently is right now, it's it's not going to be, uh, a, a, what we like a revolutionary mode. Uh, so yeah, and if, for all we know, the genre might just be incompatible with it. Um, yeah. or well, I mean, frankly. The other thing is like why why pick the game that gets the people the most mad like why pick the genre the, the, the like the sub genre of the fight against it makes the people the most mad and make it a two v two yeah so because well, I mean, like I don't know because like the way the way I look at it is like because we did have the the two v two mode in Cross Tekken right and like while you which know, bombed I think that was that yeah which 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 didn't go over well I know we did we did one tournament in Alaska for that and like while we did have fun with that like. It was pretty much like the only duo tournament we did for that, and um, even then, like that was a more like simplified version because, like uh, you know, like you said, it wasn't a versus game, right? It was somebody playing, you know, their their um, their Street Fighter or their Tekken character in that in that two D game, and it wasn't anything in terms of uh, uh, as complicated in terms of like the mix ups and the the left right kind of stuff, right? It's like, oh, it's your turn, all right? You're, you know, you come in, then it was kind of like reset back to neutral kind of things like there wasn't anything um on the level of the stuff that i've seen um you know from the clips and stuff on twitter in the in terms of what you have to deal with yeah uh, well i yeah i i i this is might be a, again it might be a, like an issue that i have with the audience more so than the player base or the more, more so than the game itself which is like i'm like mm -hmm. is is the fighting game community the right the right place for team heads when we spent our like we built our entire identity around solo play and yeah. i think for newer generation people yes they can start from that fresh from that mindset and they'll have fun and it'll it'll grow over time but like our generation i don't know man <laughs> well, i mean i guess i guess for me something i just thought about was like in terms of like uh smash because doubles and smashes is, is a pretty popular thing right like usually it's like you know, we have the singular bracket, but then there's also doubles. That's a big thing, and obviously, that's that's really different because they're playing on the on the screen simultaneously versus being tagged in and out. So, I mean, there's a huge difference in terms of that. But I mean, I don't know. It's like I'm definitely happy that they're including that, and that it seems like they want to make that make that work and make that an integral thing. And who knows? Like, 
uh, like Freezy said, you know, maybe it's just a big thing that catches on with like the casual players and the people that play League of Legends and just like, hey, there's this fighting game. You get to play as Darius and you get to play as Echo and we get to, you know, we get to beat each other up playing this. And maybe there's like a whole kind of segment of the the community that just does that, right? Like the kind of like the Mortal Kombat people that just want to play single player combat, unlock all the content in the game, and they don't care about playing competitively and stuff like that. Maybe there's a whole segment of people that are just in, in that section. Let's, I let's think expand the... on that idea, though, Benny. Like, do you think that that group of people is part of the FGC? Do you think that there would be a place for them at Evo? Um, well, I don't know. That depends if if they really wanted to be competitive. Because, like, I mean, while there is the kind of the segment of of the hardcore that are going to want to play competitively and play like the single, you know, the the single mode, like, you know, maybe they even if they have duos modes. Maybe those people still don't want to go out and, and compete. Maybe it's just something that they just want to play. That's the thesis that I have, though. Is like, is two v two actually competitive? I don't think it is. I think the only way that it could be competitive and actually like be in the scene is if like they do run some sort of pro tour and make it a two v two specific thing. Um, I mean, they could still always have one v ones on the side, but if there was some sort of Honestly, like this sucks because it is esports. But if it is some sort of money involved, uh, that would give an opportunity to make uh, a reason to have a circuit or or a tournament series to get majors also on board and also host two v twos. Because like Street Fighter Cross Tekken, uh, I want to say it's Evo that did this, where it only did a two v two bracket, right? Yeah, I want to say that, that ruined the game. Like competitively, yeah. that ruined, like that that dumpstered the game before it had a chance yeah. to breathe. So I feel like in that, in that, uh, because they did that, I feel like as an individual game, people will only want to run one v ones. But if they put money into it and say, "Hey, we want to hold a two v two tournament series, uh, and we need other tournament vendor or tournament venues to also host this as well," then there's legs on it. There has to be a reason for it to run. And it makes people actually give a try, and uh, yeah. And well, okay, so so a question regarding that. So so like for instance, Freezy. So if if they said that this is on this game was only going to be played competitively as duos, would that deter you from from playing it? Like if it was if they did a tournament series and it was strictly duos, would and they said, all right, this is the only way that we're going to give a prize pot or we're going to give, uh, well, what is it we're thinking of? Uh, pot bonus and things like that right we're gonna give a pot bonus in the duos mode like would you would you play in that or would you just be like you know what i'm not interested um hmm of course <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard you put the I kid mean... in the corner man <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. um i think if i i mean it depends. I mean, uh, I think that if I was able to find someone with the same competitive drive as me and we both there. wanted to achieve the same goal, um, yeah. that I think I probably would. But um, if I couldn't find someone like that, then I would probably yeah. say no. I'd have to find someone um, specific like that. That I could really well, I, chill with. No, no, I love I love that answer because like it's one of those things, like even even playing, like I said, I played a lot of Call of Duty back in the day, and like I had a I had a core group of friends that I would play with, right? And occasionally we get a random, they would kind of throw a wrench in all of our plans, and we're just like, Man, this sucks, right? We have to deal with this one person that's always just kind of like deviating from the plan and just you know, kind of screwing up the whole team dynamic, right? And then occasionally we get somebody else that's competent and we'd like We'll invite them on the side. Hey, come join us. And like, there's communication and everything. Everything is great. And it's like, you know, you always get that, uh, get that feeling from other people. You know, uh, I always hated the word when people call you tryhards or stuff like that. And I was like, oh, God forbid that I want to learn to be competent at a game. Like, you know, I'm not just here to be a freaking meat bag and just die, right? Like, I want to win. You know, so it's just like, I love that answer because that's that's kind of how I would feel too. Because like, I'm an extremely con competitive person enough. If my partner was just like, yeah, I'm just here to have fun. And then like they lose and they kind of just shrug their shoulders and, and this and that. And like we lose because of something that I know we could have won. Like that would eat me alive so bad. 
A hundred percent. Yeah, exactly my thoughts. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. what happened with my League of Legends team too. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind so of running you, that same dilemma. Um, I mean, yeah. it's, it's the same thing because like when I did play League of Legends competitively and, you know, I was trying to go pro on it. Uh, there was a lot of times where I would run into a teammate who is like, I don't want to practice today. Well, you know, you're kind of holding four other people back. So what do we yeah. do? Do we cut the guy? Do we, you know, try to play without him? Like that's the part that mm -hmm. sucks. And that it's nice in the sense that I only have to find one other person that is of equal skill. But like, I know my skill level isn't going to match uh, Freezy's at this current time and moment. I would feel bad to join Freezy and hold Freezy back and be like, Hey, Freezy, carry me to top eight or something of that sort. But, you know, um, you know, there's times where I, I do want to try, but, I, I, you know, I want to find someone that is at the same level and that we could grow together and uh, be able to compete hard and kind of have that same language, too, where, you know, we're not salty at each other because there's times where, I, you know, I did play competitively and some person's way more passionate in the sense of anger at times. And, you know, like, while I want to play to win, I still want to have fun. So when someone's mad and salty because they lost, it kind of kills the vibe and, and the enjoyment of the mm -hmm. game. And I don't yeah. learn anything because I, the, every time we lose, someone's pissed off and angry. And then now I have to deal with that instead of dealing with what can we have done to do better. So, yeah. I, yeah but, that, that's, that's what I was going to say, too. Like, it, it definitely kills kind of the vibe. And, like, while I haven't lost any friendships over you know playing games uh you know competitively not even like tournament wise just you know online and just you know trying to be competent and win that way like i haven't lost any friendships over that but there's definitely times where like you know everybody's having a good time and something something bad happens or some situation just doesn't go our way and like yeah the mood is definitely kind of kind of dampened and just like uh like maybe i'll go play something else guys <laughs> and that kind of sucks um yeah, uh, did you want to say something about that too, John? Or did yeah, you have did. an opinion I on did. that? Yeah, uh, I think um, so. We talk about like finding somebody with the same competitive drive, right? But like in a practical sense, that's only a very, very small part of it because it's like, Benny, you and I have similar competitive values, right? But you work nights. So yeah, yeah. we're just we're we're not gonna play. Like that's all right. Like that's just yeah. the way it works. So so it's it's not even just like hey, there's similar skill level of similar drive, similar motivation. It's also like, do you guys gel well on a personality level? Do you do you have yeah. similar working schedules or or school schedules or do you basically do you play at the same time? And then on top of that, like we have the the usual like one v one challenges, which is like okay, how do I find good comp competition as well? How do I schedule matches mm -hmm. with top players? And now you have four people to do that with as opposed to two. And that's really, really hard. Um, Ooh, yeah, that's true. So like, yeah. I, I do think that like from a, from a, like, I, I'm sure Maynard, you have a ton of experiences with, with this for league where you like, you had to probably set practice sessions and make sure everyone shows up on time. And I bet a lot of people didn't show up on time. And then you had to deal with that shit too, compared to yeah. like, I want to log in and play fighting games. I'm going to hop on ranked queue <laughs> and that's yeah. it. You know, I'm going to get better that way. Um, so like it, the barrier of entry, I think, to, to even get a duos team off the ground, even just like personality chemistry or availability and stuff like that, that, that stuff can't be discounted compared to like competitive drive, which again, that's, there's still like even a variance of that competitive drive on this call. So yeah. who knows if it, like, I, my, my, my point is like, does that person actually exist? And for a yeah, lot yeah. of people, it might not. Yeah. <laughs> I do yeah. think the good news is like someone that is playing at a high level um we do have a lot of people at the least now like i know there's a street fighter completely different like subgenre of the game but having 5200 people uh shows that the pool is really large and really big so um as an example if freezy wanted to play competitively and is looking for someone like i do feel like the pool is much larger and if anything it's a better time now than it was at cross tekken uh, so mm -hmm. if they were to try to make 2v2 work, this is not a bad time in comparison. I think the what? difference between this game and Cross Tekken is that for Cross Tekken, my image of it is uh, 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 Rick and Scott playing tag team in, in Evo and getting mad at each other. Like old guys playing and getting mad at each other because like they've been playing for decades with each other and now they have to play on a team together and they're pissed. 
and then for 2xko my image is like a bunch of kids for UC's age playing duos and having a blast so you just don't have that you don't have that legacy like burden of like the way the community was up like the way like my generation at least was brought up in the community to to really value solo play um so yeah. it, it just this might be a problem that just fixes over time as we age out yeah, I thought I thought Nam brought up a good point too in terms of like the the biggest issue with uh, with cross teching was the fact that the the round was over if one character died. And I remember a lot of times like when I'd play, uh, even like single player, right? Like I wouldn't make that tag in time, right? And even get my other character in, and then my team would be dead because you know I made that decision, or I, or I didn't make the right decision. And the same thing, like, I remember seeing that in like the duos as well, right? Like, Somebody gets, oh, I need to tag out, I need to tag out. They couldn't get, get out safely. And then, you know, the round's over. The other person didn't get to play. And, um, you know, I mean, I think that's an important that's an important part of it as well. Is because, like, I've always thought about that in terms of, like, kind of the team tournaments as well. Because, like, um, typically, like, the team tournaments that we've had in fighting games is usually, uh, what do they call it, Pokemon style and then Waseda style, right? Uh, Where geez. Yeah. Yeah, we're you know, one everybody is, uh, gets to play. Yeah, everybody gets the chance to play and then it's like you you go through everybody else and if if everybody on the opposing team loses then that team lost, right? But at least everybody got to play versus all right, we're going to put up John. John, if you run the gauntlet against these five people, guess what? Nobody else has to play. Thanks for carrying us, right? So, uh I guess in that sense, I mean, it is I think that's a pretty big big difference as well because it does give your give your opponent or your or your uh your partner a chance to 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 play as well and i didn't know that that whole thing with the uh the assist being still available in the round as well i my counterpoint to that though is like it's it still happens man like you might still get locked out and you might not be able to tag correctly and then your character dies and your opponent your 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 teammate comes in but now he's playing 1v2 and yeah you have the last stand thing but it's still a hugely uphill battle you can't call the assist in neutral anymore it has you have to be punished for losing a character is like, it like, is it called last stand in this game yeah it, they just come in and they do a level <laughs> one super yeah it's called oh, last okay. breath or some shit i don't know what it, like, oh last but okay. yeah, yeah. It's last stand. yeah so like i i think that that yeah. You you like you still feel like you were set up by your like it's actually worse in a lot of ways because you don't just lose the game you feel like you were set up by your teammate to to lose because now yeah. you, your your opponent is your your two opponents are running their assists and tag tag, tag canceling on you and you're all by your lonesome wait, waiting for your last stand to recharge yeah um, and there's times where like Freezy dies in the corner I have to find my way out of the corner yeah. I mean, it's it 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 in Call of Duty, there's there's a perk called Last Stand where basically like you can get shot and then you just basically are laying in your back with a pistol and that's what, that was my visual right there. It was just like <laughs> was... Oh, my dead. <laughs> and a lot of times it feels like that where you're like, well, my partner died and used up all the resources and I've got a couple, but like I'm I'm in the corner uh, because Freezy died in the corner and now I'm doing all these mix ups. <laughs> <laughs> at the very least oh, like it's man. cool that the game gives you uh two different super meters so you have your own but uh yeah, one yeah, of the frustrations yeah. that i did have um playing with like <laughs> the, we, we had a group of like five six people so we just rotated partners and just mixed it up often so one of the frustrations i had is there's times where like i would start as the assist and i would burst for my teammate oh man. and they would never have burst for me so like uh, every time i fight i would not have a burst available because i'm always saving him rather than him ever having a tag to me and giving me a chance to get it have you run into the scenario yet where like this has happened to me with multiple people multiple times like not just like i'm not like targeting anybody specifically but like i'm assist my my partner gets hit they're on point they get hit i burst they say thanks and then they immediately run to the other side of the screen and get hit again yeah that happens so <laughs> fucking often yeah, like, you, you get, you get like the, you get the, the breath on like you get the thanks under your breath like they are genuinely grateful and they're expressing gratitude for you and but you can tell like their thoughts are immediately how do i get back in how do i get back in and then they get they get tagged again and you're like i can't do shit now and as the assist i'm like i you i got nothing yeah. <laughs> it's like the, the video of the the goat that they pull out of the hole and then the goat hops up and jumps right back in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a perfect comparison. <laughs> I'm not thinking anything on anybody specifically. I think I've done that too, but like, oh yeah, man, that, that's that, like that's that's prevalent in in any team game. 
Uh, no, same thing, it's Call not. of Duty. Oh, I, I revived oh. you, and then you know they turned the corner, and like, no, no, yeah. no, go over there. Dead. What are you doing? <laughs> Come on. This is the first oh. time in any fighting game ever where you had to share a burst, which is is it's monumental <laughs> in a way. But like sharing a burst means, man, you're you can waste a burst, and it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so no, so I had a question specifically for you, John. Just I just thought about that. How how has been playing duos with Jess? How's that? How's that gone for you in terms of like? I know initially you were like, "Hey, we got a I think like a twenty game win streak or something." Like you guys were doing pretty well, but like yeah. as you guys played played more, how 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 has that gone? Uh, yeah. I mean, to shed some more light on that, like this was like night one of the beta or the alpha, uh, and we were just playing really late, and uh, we got matched up with a riot employee in a two v two. Like it was a riot employee and somebody else, um, and so we just kind of went ham. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We w ended up on like a, it had to be like, we hit the win cap of 15 and the streak stopped incriminating at 15, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, we don't know how many at we actually had total, but it was definitely over 15. Um, and uh, we were just having a lot of fun playing at first. Um, and then what ended up happening is like, she hit a ceiling with Ari uh, because the character was just a little difficult. Like if we look at, yeah. It, she's she's actually a really good uh perspective in that it's somebody who's new to fighting games still um and so like a lot of things like wake up timing and knowing to mash on wake up like it's just not as intuitive to a newer player um yeah and so like or like how i know like when to like when to dash full screen and when to go, go in and when to aggress like with mobility like a lot of, there's a lot of challenges that the jess i think has not just as a new fighting game player but also like as a street fighter player transitioning to a versus game um she's running into a lot of the same stuff that i see like you ran into benny or josh ran into or a lot of the people who picked up marvel 3 from street fighter and then just didn't didn't gel with it right um yeah. like they there's a lot of less emphasis on movement um so what ended up happening is she had a ceiling with I was gonna Ari. say I didn't need movement. I had I had this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had the Hulk H, yeah. So you find ways, you find ways, Benny, to, to not play the game, I guarantee it. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, actually to be to be fair though, like Hulk ended up being a meta in the game anyway. Like he just had to play KBR's team and not whatever team yeah, he yeah. picked. Um, but I uh what what ended up happening is she ended up picking Braum. Uh, instead of Ari to make it easier and then I was like well shit you know what I'll do is I'll play Echo with Braum because that's cool like they work well together but the issue is that all the cool shit that that team can do we can't do it uh it's just it's yeah. too complicated for us um and that's not just like uh, uh like saying anything about Jess's skill level it's also just like the sheer amount of coordination it does to do handshake tags during an assist uh assist call and her knowing when to call the assist because you know like we are like i think when you're playing a 2v2 you're relying on instinct you can't really compete com like discuss the game plan over voice because there's like milliseconds of delay over discord um mm. so like you might you might be telling them to burst but you might be a second too late and then they burst at the wrong time so like you yeah. actually have to let your opponent kind of feel it out and do it themselves it might be different in a real life situation where you're sitting on a couch with one another but because of that like yeah coordinating all that plus the difficulty around combos plus like just everybody else getting better like it's it's gotten a lot harder over time and i've just gotten more and more frustrated with the game over the time over time i'm not sure if you guys have picked it up but like i don't actually really care for this game very much i'm getting more and more angry whenever i play it <laughs> but <laughs> that makes it really difficult when you're playing with your wife because then you're getting mad and your wife is just trying her best and like in in my case like it felt like i was taking it out on her a lot so i'm just like yeah. this game makes me not be who i want to be uh yeah. so that's that's that i i don't really know how i feel about playing with your significant other on this one like at the, at the same time like we loved playing that first night together um we loved uh uh like being able to play a fighting game together in general because she went to evo she loves like fighting she likes fighting games quite a bit she likes street fighter a lot uh and we she just wanted to share that with me so i like like it, there's a chance for us for that to really like turn into something super cool but um my my dislike of versus games is starting to creep in and that has made it difficult i think uh well, on, i was gonna say us. 
it's more of a like a marriage joke when I was like the honeymoon phase is over then, right? Like it's like you guys um, are in the like the, oh, the real, the real the shit game. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man. Yeah. No, that, that's that's cool though. That's a that's a great perspective. Because like you said, like, you know, it, it came down to like not necessarily anything against her, but you know, the fact that she decided to play to blame Rom to kinda you know, and then you you switched it up as a result. Like, yeah, I figured okay. that that would be be something that would happen. And to be clear, like that character that I switched to is too hard for me. Um, I don't want to play a character like that anymore. Uh, and so like, I probably ought to change it up, but I feel hamstrung into picking a specific character because it's a versus game. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, eh. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess the last thing I wanted to touch on actually in terms of uh, 2XKO was um, what characters are you guys hoping that are in and you can go ahead and start Maynard. i'll let you go yeah. first and then freeze i mean uh i'm a huge fan of jinx both playing her in league of legends and with the arcane animated series i think should be a great addition um like the the jinx vi seem like the big two obvious characters that should be in there because of arcane uh vi would be great to do uh bionic arm with i think that'd be a lot of fun if they bring her in and put her in like in this game like that but yeah. characters that i i don't feel as obvious i do feel like they have a high chance of being there would be like a um while i haven't oh, played a yeah. collie much in the, her new kit uh i feel like they need some sort of ninja representation i feel like she is a great design she's probably gonna sell a lot of skins so <laughs> uh i feel like riot should definitely add her in i think uh her mobility would be a lot of fun and something that would be a great addition to ari but uh, like coming from League of Legends and being in what they call an AD carry, uh, a, a marksman style character, uh, I'm curious to see how they would implement these characters. Jinx is the only one I could see being in there. And to put it in comparison with Marvel vs. Capcom, I feel like she'll just be like Chris Redfield. So having a type of like machine gun, shotgun, and uh, mm -hmm. rocket launcher, she kind of has all these types of tools already in her kit, in her character. So I do think that she would be a great addition, but I'm curious to see what they would do with the others if they ever add them in, like Jin or Ash. Ash could okay. probably be like Hawkeye, maybe. I don't. <laughs> okay. Oh, before real quick, before we get to Freezy, um, are there any characters like within the League of Legends game? Are there any characters that within that game kind of synergize well together? Like I know, you know, I know that there's typically like you know. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking like Overwatch. Like you know, you well, you want somebody to play the tank. You want somebody to play the support. You want somebody to do this, right? Like, as, yeah. are there certain character kind of pairings that that you think work well in that game? Yeah, there's plenty of like combinations. There's always like that idea of when you build a comp of five people, do you want to play for picks? Where do you want to like just kind of be like a, a group of assassins and try to get one or two kills and run away? Uh, then get some objectives or do you want to build for like the team fight have a big bruisey front line that can protect your back uh there's other things as well uh kind of like an overwatch style team where you have like a big wombo combo and you pop two ultimates together that will just ruin the opposing side um so i i do think that they have a lot of opportunity to make some real fun combinations in a 2v2 but mm -hmm. um because like i don't ever think that like you need all five to make that combination. There's generally like, hey, we have a yeah. a bit of a bruisery team, but one or two characters already assassins that look for picks. So once they get the picks, then we could go in for a team fight and make a 5v4 or a 5v3. Gotcha. Okay. All right, Freezy, how about you in terms of like characters or that you want to see in the game? Um especially in League of Legends, um and in fighting games in general. I'm not a huge, big character loyalist. Um, and this, especially in League of Legends, where they have like uh, 170-something champions. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, you can look it up. It's, <laughs> it's something close to that number, I think. Uh, and only playing the game casually. I, I don't really have like a ton of champions that I'm really invested in. I play just a big range of them just whoever i feel like playing that day um okay. i think some uh unique choices uh would be one of this character called nar who uh <laughs> he's like this little little uh, 
what's called a yordle, which is kind of like a little gremlin. <laughs> uh, and he looks like gremlin. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and he um, is like ranged, and he just wants to try to zone you. And then over time, as he does damage and takes damage, he builds up a rage bar, and then uh, eventually he has to transform into Meganar, which is like this big hulking beast, and he wants to get up in your face and bruise. And I, I am, he's one of my favorite champs um, to play, and also just like I think he'd be really cool to add. Uh, I'm interested to see if they would add him uh, and how they would do it. Other than that, I don't really have any champs I'm like absolutely needing in the game. Fine with most champs. Uh, I think, of course, some obvious ones would be someone like Set. I think he'd be fun. Um, I'm interested to see how they'll do with Stance Changers because I think they are probably going to add Jace from Arcane. Uh, yeah, and I'm interested to see how they, what they do with them. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, um, I just think I'm interested of the characters we've seen so far. I'm interested to see what they will do with uh, other champions. Okay. Yeah, I was just looking up these characters because, again, like, I, you know, I don't really have uh, any kind of background with them. And I was, like, looking up Nar. <laughs> it reminds me of, like, the, I don't know, like, the, just a small, like, cat. <laughs> My sister like said, that character. Yeah. yeah. She, she oh, yeah. Like it looks like it's fun. And then you said, oh. and then you said set, and like I just looked at the initial character picture of set, and I just looked. It looks like a a male version of Ari. So I mean, I don't know if that's <laughs> even look at it, but that's what, that's usually that's what I see. <laughs> He's a bruisery Ed. Yeah. He's a big exactly. country guy. Yeah. But uh, you're right. I did look it up. It's 168 right now. Which is insane. Okay. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. So they they have a lot of champs they can add to the game. <laughs> a lot of content they can pull from. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. This is definitely a game that you know they, you know, I'm sure plan to be around for a while, and <laughs> they've got a different, uh, a huge character pool to work with. So that'll be pretty awesome. What about you, John? Was there any particular characters? I think we talked about this on the previous show too, but yeah, I, I to the point where like I, I kind of want to make a different point this time around. Um, like now that I have played the game and I see how in depth these characters truly are, like I again I, I've expressed some opinions about the game, but like that's just more like my own personal taste. It's not like I don't believe this is an objectively bad game. I think this is actually a really well well designed game. Um, in that, uh, the characters have. A lot of depth like yasuo has all the stance stuff right and a ton of mm-hmm. like a ton of combo routes like like all the all the different archetypes i was mentioning earlier have been represented except for like zoner so i feel like i'm looking at it in terms of like fighting game archetypes where yeah they're gonna add a zoner yeah it's gonna be jinx but the point about it being complex we're running into that with street fighter 6 right now where like everyone's complaining about costumes right and how long it takes to model those and how you know the the content pipeline isn't as quick for as p- people would want um the sheer amount of depth in the 2xko characters makes me think that like the 170 they can pick from it's just unreasonably unreasonable to expect anything like i feel like no matter what we're going to be disappointed and i don't mean to say that in a negative way but more like it's going to take so long to build a single character um that they have to they're gonna and it's probably gonna cost a ton too because like if you look at the mm. complexity of a, a league of legends champion and they have like an auto attack and the you know the four skill shots and they have move, movement animations and stuff like that you have all of that plus more for a fighting game character so it's just going to take more manpower yeah. and therefore more money to develop that character so what i yeah. think is going to happen is um they're gonna they're gonna be very picky choosy about which characters actually show up and it's going to be the safe ones. So you're going to have your arcane characters, right? You're going to have your KDA characters cuz that's popular too. But like I don't think they're going to they're going to pull like everyone on the internet's like being like, "Oh, pull from this put like fucking Chogoth in there or like some like or Nar as another <laughs> like some character that's buried under like 150 other characters that are that do the same thing, right? Quinn. Everyone yeah, yeah, it's the equivalent of somebody <laughs> want, want, who wants Eagle to come back in Street Fighter, right? It's like, there are people <laughs> out there that like that character, but like, if you're, 
you're going to be exp investing millions of dollars into building this character out and, and you know developer salaries and art assets and voice rec voice actor recordings all that shit like they're gonna they're gonna have to play it safe at first um so i expect i expect his owners so i like jinx and uh and jace's owners uh vi uh, and then the, the different kda characters like akali uh i can't name all the kda i don't i don't give a shit <laughs> you know what i mean like those other characters yeah. Well, see, um, I mean, see, that's the other thing too, because like you have to, uh, other than like the the archetypes that you're gonna pick and stuff like that, you've also got to look at the balance from a fighting game perspective too. Right? Oh yeah, and then, totally. Yeah, like yeah. like we everybody wants a zoner, right? Like we talk about eighty carries. Eighty carries are a part of League of Legends. They're a part of every single team. But you can most fighting games only have like two to three zoners. Like they're not they're not a significant portion of the cast. And so you can't just be like, oh, add all my favorite AD carries to the game because then the whole game turns into zoners and it's a completely different <laughs> game. I guess Marvel, like a Marvel style, that would be the best avenue for that. But still, like, I don't know. So they're going to, I think they're going to be, they're a little bit more handcuffed on what characters they can pick than what we think. Like, yeah, we can pull up that page of 170 champions, but like, let's be realistic on like what to expect there. I'm saying that mainly to like, level set expectations for everybody going forward because i don't i think the devs are doing a great job um i just like i and i it would it would bum me out if they were saddled with unreasonable expectations and the weight of the game of the reputation of the game like all that bullshit about the net code and stuff i'm like okay you know they still have to make a fighting game like there's just so much legacy that's built up and expectations built on top piled on top of this game that i I, I think some of it should, is is unfair, <laughs> yeah. and we should just kind of like like dial back the expectations a little bit. Like this is not God's gift to esports. This is just another <laughs> really profitable company within the space making a fighting game. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that's a great way to look at it too. In terms of like you said, like they've got to choose the kind of like the the safer characters. Like you can't just you know throw throw caution to the wind and be like, you know, yeah, we're going to bring this character. Like, and I, I, I like how you said buried under everybody else. Right. Cause it's the same thing that, that street fighter is dealing with too. Right. People want their characters back. And when they announced the guest characters, there was a ton of people that were happy. And then there are other people that are just like, why would you put them in before this? And it's just like, they still have a slot. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, you can't make everybody happy. So it's just like, you know, <laughs> it, it is what it, what it is. It's like Shoto's too. Like if for, if for every AD carry that they add, you know, they're going to be like, okay, well, I, we've added another AD carry, but it's it's just the same as the previous one. So it's just better to play Luke all the time, you know? Um, <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine if like the next DLC, the next season is like, we're going to put in Sagat, we're going to put in Dan, we're going to put in Sean. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> what? It's like, why would you put them all at this one time? <laughs> but they're fan favorites, Benny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like Chogoth, aka the Violator. <laughs> I went there, Vader, uh, 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 just for you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. I, I think it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, I mean, when is the when is the alpha scheduled to end? Is there Monday. an end date for it? Monday. Yeah, Monday. Mm. Oh, okay. That's back to our regularly scheduled program with Street Fighter Six. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Nice. Well, I want I wanted to talk a little bit about that too. I know John did because he's kind of I don't know. I I I don't ever say John's in a character crisis. Like ever since five, like he's always just been like gravitating to like other characters, and I was always kind of envious of that because like I'm I'm the type of person like I I never feel like I've mastered my character ever. Like you know, it's just like there's always stuff for me to learn. I don't know, maybe Honda, but you know, I was he's kind of basic, so in four so <laughs> i didn't have one frame links to deal with and shit like that it was like okay just do hands and it's just like all right anti-air i'm good <laughs> but uh, uh boots, ugg boots and lattes and headbutts right headbutts and butt slams <laughs> yeah but when it came to like uh yeah john you know when john came to to playing five like you know you went from from chun li to buki and then uh or no karen actually it was karen and chun li right or no yeah karen, karen, china, buki, chun. karen china buki Ch uh karen chun and then Khalid, oh. and then Khalid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I <laughs> yes, I I, I could yeah, play so. some call. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but again, like I remember you you talking about in terms of like you know, there's a kind of a base structure for all, you know how the characters all all similarly play, and like you kind of just just work with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what was what was your kind of uh, 
your thought process and your choice to want to want to learn ed i know a lot of it came from uh from evil right oh right yeah so i picked up ed recently um and it's yeah it, it, like i remember watching evo finals with maynard we were like sitting in we weren't in the convention through the arena but we were in the convention center and just chilling out and yeah i got to watch an ed mirror and i'm like oh this character is really tight um uh, and you remember on our podcast when we had freezy on as well um like we were talking about how cool the character was but they were too hard and i'm like <laughs> the best time to learn a new character is probably after evo because i'm not really playing for anything high stakes right now um it's true. Uh, I I think I had just finished playing in the Colorado tournament as well, or no, I think I started playing Ed before that too. I just yeah, I was I don't know. It's the way the way it panned out was like uh, I ping I hit up Freezy for combos, and then I tried to copy what he did to me when we were playing when he was playing Ed, and then I tried to learn that dream <laughs> combo Momochi does, and that's kind yeah. of it. Um, but yeah, just style. Uh, also, there is like a general feeling that the Japanese feel that Ed's top five um, and Chun is not as good this season. And a lot of, a couple of uh, Chun players have swapped to Ed. Um, so similar similar game plan as far as like mid range zoning. Um, it's just that instead of instead of up close uh, pressure that Chun has, uh, Ed has really good far range pressure. Um, so I'm. I don't know. I'm, I'm having a good time with him. He's definitely really hard. Like, he's harder than to play than Ken. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> but sorry, well, was the question like my thought process for picking up a new character, or just in general? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just, just kind of like why, why, why Ed? It was just more. Oh, kind of why? Like why yeah, Ed. he's he's just cool. He's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a meal. Yeah, I, I I hate Ed as a character. By the way, like the fucking anti-hero Edge Lord bullshit. I don't care about any of that stuff. But mechanically, his function is pretty cool. <laughs> oh, function. Oh. Yeah. You're mine. So yeah, so we yeah. haven't. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we don't want to make this like an Evo show, but like yeah, since Evo, um, you've entered a couple online tournaments, uh, the TNS tournaments and stuff like that, Freezy. Um, so how's that? How's that been going for you? Because like you, you know, you did. What was it 97 or something like that at Evo? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then yeah, since you've come back, like, yeah, you've you've done well at some of the the big online tournaments, you know, with the big names. Like, you know, these mm -hmm. aren't just some run of the mill, like, yeah, I'm gonna join this tournament. Like these this is like the biggest basically online tournament in the US right now. Yeah. So wait, what was the question again? <laughs> uh just no, just in terms of like how that's how that's been going for you, like, you know, since after Evo, because we haven't talked to you since then. That's true. Um yeah, it's been going great. Um, it's interesting because <laughs> um, it definitely feels like, yeah, now I can kind of start hanging with some of the um, top players there on the online tournaments and sometimes like take sets and games off of them. Um, and it's 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 interesting, <laughs> especially with like um, some of the reactions uh my <laughs> character choice and my play style <laughs> um and so it's just um i'm not sure it's it felt like something kind of just clicked uh um, yeah, that's, that, that's what i was gonna say like, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what i was gonna ask you like was there something that you know you felt you kind of just you know something clicked for you or like mm -hmm. um and then uh like so you've it i think you were like tied for seventh in the last tns is that right yep that's correct yeah. So, like, do you feel at this point? Do you feel like you're kind of hitting a wall, or like I, I think I heard like I kind of tuned in super late. I think I tuned into like the last two games, and then I heard uh, somebody saying, I think one of the commentators or something was talking about how um, your offense had kind of like run its course, and like your opponent had adjusted to that. So, do you feel like what's your, kind of like your next evolution, or do you feel like you're hitting a wall at, at all in terms of that? Um. Well, okay, so still going with the offense, something I've noticed as kind of like a trend is that in general, in um, rounds, I'm not using Blancatron mm. as like my sole win condition as much. I'm just using mm. my overwhelming offense in general instead. Um, and my, of course, my subs have gotten a lot better. And so when I do get Blancatron set up, it's, really devastating but yeah. um a lot of rounds i'm noticing i've just not had to use them i've been just playing better and i 
um, of course, it's still a great boon, but it's not as necessary as it was um, a few months ago when I first started picking him up. Oh, that's um, okay. And so what I'm trying to do now is um, I'm just trying trying to improve all the other aspects of my game plan, um, including like neutral and my defense, mostly because I think some of my biggest issues right now have to do with, uh, funny enough, my reactions with some stuff, uh, okay. especially anti airs I feel like are causing me a lot of trouble right now. And so mm -hmm. I need to work on stuff like that. And then just in general, just improve my gameplay with neutral and defense. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, th I think that's, that's always been the thing with me in terms of like fighting games is just, you know, there's always something to improve on. Like, you know, one, even Definitely. if you think, you know, even, even, even if you win a tournament, right? Like, you know, John's always said, like, you got the target on your back now and people are going to be gunning for you even more now, right? Like, you're you're mm -hmm. the, the you're the mountaintop to climb. And it's like, people are going to pop off when they beat you or they're going to be, you know, super excited, you know, to, to take a game off of you or anything like that. So you got to constantly, constantly be evolving, constantly be improving in, on parts of your game to, you know, kind of stay there and maintain or, you know, level up. Definitely. I, I also, like, we, we brought up winning tournaments, too. We, like, calling attention to the most recent Secrets Labs, which has been, it's, it's that's the video that's been playing on this entire podcast. Uh, Freezy, you took first place in that one, too, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, good um, stuff, man. Thank yeah, that, that was organized and run by the very our very own X button here. Um, <laughs> yeah. How, how are the results of that that bracket overall, Maynard? Yeah, Freezy uh, definitely took first, uh, competing against uh, Tucson's Native Wolf. Thank you for coming down from Tucson. Um, Brandy got second. Let's go, Brandy! Yeah. Wow. And the coming crazy news: yeah. uh, Native Wolf <laughs> Big Mac Combo ninety eight, uh, who got third. Uh, number four was Drunk Jamie Overload. Um, then we got uh, tied for fifth, Shogberg and SS Blue. Uh, Shogberg playing Cami, SS Blue playing um, Bison. And uh, tied for seventh was Ninja Nam, who's also playing Bison, and Chadwalk, who's playing DJ. Uh, it's really cool to see Chadwalk come back. I haven't seen him in a while, so welcome back to the scene. Uh, congrats on getting top eight. And this is honestly the biggest Secret Labs I've had in a while. We had 29 players. We had 32 people signed up. So it's unfortunate that three didn't make it, but to be able to host a, a bracket this large um, was a lot of fun. And it was great seeing all these players come out. And I think it's the biggest pot I've had uh, since I started hosting personally for Secret Labs. Nice. I want to give a shout out to love Nom to see too. Wow. Nom, Nom got top eight in a 20 man, 29 man bracket with a new character. <laughs> yeah. That's Apparently he's retired too, but. Mm he's -hmm. <laughs> retired now? <laughs> Dang. Yeah. That's what he told me. I thought he was a Marvel player. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was tight seeing yeah, Ninja uh, Nam climb through. Uh, SS Blue was a, a big surprise as well. Actually, both of those players uh, were huge, um, caused huge upsets because uh, Sia, one of our usual suspects for hitting top three, uh, I, I'm sorry, like he didn't make it into the top eight. And it's because he was eliminated by SS Blue and Ninja Nam, uh, two of our top mm. eighters uh, for this one. So big shout outs nice. to SS Blue and Ninja Nam uh, kind of overcoming the odds and overcoming the seating and being able to put on a show. Nice. Wait, so Nam well, beat nice. Christian? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. I see how it is. Yeah, I think no it wonder. was in okay. loser semis. Or not loser semis, sorry. The the match right before top eight. Yeah. That's not That's a correct. semi, but a qualifier into the top eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. No, that, that's that's great to hear in terms of the turnout too, because I mean, you know, I know right off the top of my head, me, John, and Scott weren't there. Um, you know, a bunch of the Tucson guys, because um, it was just who came from Tucson. Was it just uh, it's like Orange and then uh, Native Wolf? That was yeah, it, right? and big shout out to it's like Orange who actually gave the ride uh, the Native Wolf. They were the, the carpool from Tucson representing them, and it was really yeah. cool to see them uh, compete. They they unfortunately had a team kill right before top eight, which is where Native Wolf was able to move on, and unfortunately, it's like Orange was. Barely held out of top eight. I think placing ninth as well. Oh. Mm. Nice. Dang, though. So no yeah. Tucson representation outside those two, plus a, still a 29-man bracket. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. well done. So lots of new faces, then, it sounds like. 
Yeah, we had a bunch of new faces. Um, one of the returning people from the last Secret Labs was Homunculus, who I believe played Marissa last tournament, switched over okay. to Ed for this one. And uh, he did really good. He was one of the people that put me in the loser's bracket early. Um, you know, uh, he did really well. And uh, to see him go from struggling with Marissa and to see him go two wins into the winner's bracket, I don't, I didn't see how he did in the losers, but two wins in from the winner side and and competing with a, a new character that he just picked up as well. Good, good shit on him. If he watches this, great job. I hope you keep it up and I hope you come back again. Nice, nice. Any Dal any Dalson players at all? Huh? You weren't there. I don't know. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, there's always a random out there. They always yep. dodge. There's a random out there. Oh, it's teleport, uh... not dodge. <laughs> <laughs> I I know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> always ducking with this crouch H. <laughs> Well, so we had one other Arizona event happen between uh, the last podcast and now. Uh, it was the Arizona versus Colorado event, too. Uh, that's one mm -hmm. that uh, I don't know how we talk about that one because we got beat. I'm going to put it that way. <laughs> just put it out, out front there. We got beat pretty bad. Um, uh, you know, I'll take a brunt of the, the blame uh, on that. Um, we, we did get beat pretty bad. Uh, and I wasn't taking it as uh, serious as I probably should have. Uh, I did put a, a feeler out, and while we did get eight, uh, seven amazing players, um, I didn't realize that we were kind of going into this uh, in the way that we did. I, I was thinking that we were good, we were strong players, and it'd be a fun event. Uh, I don't think uh, it was I, – I think there was a, a lot of weight that I didn't realize was there, being that I guess we had previous revelry with them from like Rewired and such. And yeah. uh, they definitely brought up their <laughs> game. No, no yeah. doubt about that. Colorado definitely brought it. They did a great job. So big shout outs to them. Uh, but for representing Arizona, um, I probably should have done something more. I should have done tryouts. I should have done um, more analysis and coaching and breakdowns of the opponents um, and uh, asking players to, you know, pitch in and also help into that. I did do some scouting. I got some names and information and the CFN mm -hmm. so we could look at replays, but uh, honestly, like I didn't push for it because the, the, the way that they were talking to me, it was, Hey, it's going to be a fun chill event. And, you know, as me as a working on secret labs and other stuff, uh, I looked at it as the fun event, but I didn't, like I said, there was a lot of stuff in the background that I didn't realize would have came up as well. And mm. it was an enjoyable event in terms of like, Hey, it was fun to set up. It was cool to meet some of the guys. We met some of them at Evo. Um, like, uh, I already forgot his name. June, June bug, uh, um, slug bug, slug bug. Slug I don't bug. remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot your name. June bug. Uh, but you know, slug bug was cool. It was cool meeting up with him and Reverend dad, even though he didn't play. Um, so it, it was nice in the social aspect, but I, I need to take it to the next level. If we do have another team event in the future, I, I need to be more prepared, uh, come up with a, a composition that, you know, is is more fitting and something that uh, we all grinded hard and leveled up for. Um, yeah. Analyze and find out, you know, exactly who they play and what are their weaknesses? What are they uh, exposing right now in their replays? So... Yeah. Yeah, we so, don't have to really get in more in depth in uh, in the whole thing than that. Like, I think, like for me, like I wanted to participate in that, and I just couldn't because of the the schedule. Because it happened on a Thursday, and that's when I, you know, I work at nights, got to sleep, that kind of thing. And um, I was just gonna say, just in general, I think in a lot of ways, like you know, it's it's often said, you know, you learn you learn the most from your losses, right? And you know, being humbled, that kind of thing. So. In a way, like, you know, silver lining, that kind of thing. Maybe this is a good thing, right? Because, like you said, you're going to come better come better prepared the next time. You know, maybe you didn't take it as seriously this time. Maybe you overlook people. And, you know, it's it's easy to say that I'm not going to do that. And then, you know, you do. And it just, you know, you get humbled for it, like I said. And um, it's a it's a good learning experience if you, if you, if you know how to channel that in the right way and 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 build from it you know it's easy just to be like oh whatever it's it's nothing right yeah. but 
you know, it, it's good to hear that, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at it as a, as a, as an opportunity to, to be better for the next time. Cause I, I'm hoping that there's a next time. I hope I can participate the next time. <laughs> and, you know, you know, whether you guys do a, um, tryouts or anything like that, that's, that's perfectly fine. And, you know, I know that's something that they've done in the past when it came to like the Phoenix Tucson stuff, or even like out of state stuff and representation in that sense. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a, in a way, it's a good thing too. I mean, I, I, I also, to... oh, I want to chime in too. And like, I, I, I recognize Maynard as a, you know, as a, as a, a leader in the scene, like I know you want to take responsibility for a lot of things, but like I do as a player on that team, I, I want to sh- make sure that's known that I, I share a lot of that responsibility as well. I underperformed. Um, I, I think that there are parts of the team battle that I could have taken more seriously. I, I, I actually came into, to, I took Benny's place. Uh, so I was kind of just, I, I went in not ex- expecting to be carried by the rest of the team. I was going to go in and do my shit and focus on my, my one single match and that was it. And that one single match ended up being different anyway. But like fundamentally, <laughs> yeah. I, I was not involved with the rest of the team and I didn't push push them as hard. Like the whole team could every single person on the team, we could have pushed each other a little bit harder and united a little bit more and practiced together and whatnot. And I think that that is, as as you stated, Benny, like that lesson that we learned there, whether no matter what, that lesson had to be learned sometime and it had mm-hmm. in order for it to stick, it has to hurt. Um, so like, this is just that time and next, next time it might be better. Uh, but like we, we would, we were always destined to have to learn this lesson, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, guys, I mean, like, yeah, say, say you guys six, one, them seven, oh, them, right. And everybody, it's a, it's a clean sweep or whatever. Everybody dominates. Right. Then, then your heads get big, your egos get big. And like the next time it's run, you know, they got a chip on their shoulder and they're like, oh man, we can't let this shit happen again. Right. At least, you know, we yeah. got to at least make it more competitive can't lose in that, in that manner again. So, you know, it goes both ways. And there were, there was some heat in our discord about it too. And I want to just put a clarifying point on, on this in that, um, you know, I did not see an opinion in the discord that I felt was inappropriate. Um, I felt that everybody was approaching, whether it was like, everybody's got different ways of receiving feedback and, and providing feedback and learning. Uh, like I, as I react pretty well to negative reinforcement. Um, and a lot of people I know only react well to positive reinforcement. And so <laughs> it's, it's stuff like that where like everybody fundamentally wanted the same thing, whether it's, you know, you know, you know, they're there, you did a good job back padding to what the fuck happened. Like fundamentally, like everybody wanted us to win. And so while we all have dif- differing approaches and how we express that, I think it is worth noting that we are uh, still a united scene in that regard. And there's not enough of that unity in today's world. So I, yeah. I, I, I feel like it was a breath of fresh air to me because the drama that I remember growing up in the fighting game community was about who was better than the other. And that was it. And then somewhere in like my 20s, I honestly, it was probably around Marvel 3 came out. Stuff like money started becoming part of it. Egos, like romance became a part of it. Like the drama became <laughs> outside of the game and like people stealing from each other and drugs and all this other shit. And it's just like, I am so happy that the the, the conversation is more about who's better <laughs> and less about who's trying to fuck each other up in out, ways outside the game. And so like, it's, yeah. I, I'm much like, it's, it's a breath of fresh air compared to the esports world we live in right now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, I, I, you know, it's, it's an easy comparison in terms of like sports too. Like when your favorite team loses, like you're going to have people that are just like, blow the whole thing up, get rid of all these players. This guy sucks. You know, we need to start over. And then the other guys are like, you know, that's that's not even something that's reasonable, right? Within the restrictions of the league or whatever, right? Like we gotta work with what we got. You know, these are things that we can do that are reasonable for for improvement in that sense, right? So it's yeah. not a matter of like, you know, I, I like I get it too. Like you're gonna have people that are gonna be upset um at the result. And honestly, like, you know, pretty much everybody should be upset at the result because like you said, everybody wanted the same outcome. And it's just, you know. And, uh, and I think that you to, un- to, to underscore Maynard's point there about everybody, like uh, everybody, like you, Maynard, uh, sorry, Benny, you said that everybody, it's not just the team, everybody in Arizona, like yeah. uh, we all felt that. And I think that that's the lesson that, that Maynard 
uh, brought up earlier and that we didn't know that going in. We just were going to be our, our, you know, our group of five or a group of seven rather mm -hmm. having fun. Um, and we didn't know that the weight of Arizona was on top of us. I, I, I actually feel like as somebody who's a veteran in the scene, I should have recognized that and called that shit out. Um, but I didn't. Yeah. So I, I do think that, I do think that Maynard wants to always take the, the the accountability for everything, but like it is the whole team, myself included, and it's the whole scene as well, because you guys can also volunteer to be part of that team. You could have participated in tryouts as well. So like there's, if we are all in this together, then let's like, let's approach this together and like, like tackle it together. That's a short version of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I do also want to shout out like Freezy and Sia for Taking yeah, their match and <laughs> wanting to winning your matches. Uh, but even then, like uh the people that like it did steam uh in the team, um, I've already seen big strides and improvements. Um Big Mac, one of the players that almost clutched it out, swapped over to uh Akuma, and his Akuma is nasty right now. And seeing him <laughs> climb with it and the way he worked it in Secret Labs, like it's really cool to see. Um he he actually he came to me the day after on that uh so so we played it on thursday on friday we all went to tgz and he was telling me like yo that shit hurt i couldn't sleep <laughs> and i just been thinking about it and um and uh, you know i want to improve and he took that even though it was like a bunch of negative energy from the loss he's grown stronger and i do think that uh it's cool to see that out of him so you know i'm looking forward to seeing what he could pull out in the next month or two I don't know when the next team battle will be, but um, him already it, picking up a new character and getting third and uh, just destroying other people pretty cleanly. It, it's a good sight. Did Chase play Akuma in Secret Labs when he got third? Yes. Oh. He played Akuma okay. all the way through. Uh, I don't think he swapped at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. That's cool. But yeah. Well, I, were there any other Arizona events that happened since the last show? I can't think of any. I think it was um, just those two. I think it was just those two, and then played in World Warrior as well. Yeah, we played in World Warrior, and then Freezy got really got really far in World Warrior as well. So I want to get. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. that. Yeah, I don't even remember when the honorable episode was. I feel like that was last week, right? Or was it two weeks ago? Two, that was two weeks ago. That's two weeks ago. Okay. Last, yeah. Yeah, last week we had the rain check. <laughs> that's that's on me. By the way, yeah, like, no worries. For, for the folks who are regularly listening and it's like, oh, how come the podcast has been on and off for the past couple of weeks? It's it's mainly <laughs> been me. Uh, I've just been swamped with the house hunt and with uh, work and with honestly, dude, even after the after the team battle too, like I'm burnt out after Evo plus the team battle and all the drama that came from that. Again, good drama. I'm much happier to deal with like people talking shit as opposed to like <laughs> like cancel culture or like money or all that other bullshit that happens in our scene yeah. um but uh i've just been super depressed and angry and then the, the best thing to do would be to play 2xko right <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah we do us <laughs> oh my god yeah duos like I, i'm genuine i'm genuinely serious i'm like man i i was really mean to some people in our community and i had to apologize to them afterwards i was like this is not who I want to be when I play this when I play these video games. So I played Street Fighter Six <laughs> again, and it was a lot more fun. And I had a lot more. I, I was yeah. playing with with all pressure Tony, and uh, he was going ham, and it wasn't nearly as it wasn't nearly as infuriating as people going ham in Two X K. I guess one more thing before uh, we start going towards the sign offs, I, I do want to talk about one event coming up, uh, which is on the seventeenth, and that's uh, Dragon Ninja's Z Axis. And once again, that is going to be over in the new TGZ location in Glendale on the west side of Phoenix. West so, side? Oh, yep. my God. So just a reminder of the games. We are having DOA 5 last round, uh, Virtual Fighter 5, Ultimate Showdown, and Tekken 8. And the Tekken 8 is a uh, Tekken World Tour qualifier. So be sure to come by and get those points. And, uh, yeah, I'm real excited about that to go out and check out the new location. Yeah. Nice. I've heard good things about the new location. And again, this, like even if you don't play those games, like this is an opportunity to get that venue off the ground as, as like a viable place for fighting games for the West side. Cause like, you know, we've been going to Tempe for over a decade now, but I recognize that it was really tough for the West side folks who 
would have to burn a lot of money and gas to get there. Um, mm -hmm. And TGZ Glendale offers a, a viable alternative, but only if we make it that. Only if the community actually shows up and is able to build that event into something big. Um, so yeah. I would love for some day for there to be a Street Fighter event there, but we got to have the numbers to prove that, you know? So yeah. uh, go to TGZ Glendale, go to Z Axis if you can, you know, especially the Tekken scene. Like, this is the chance to have that second venue to tap into new talent on the West Side that you may not have interacted with in the, in the past. And maybe you'll get surprised. Maybe maybe there's some <laughs> some godlike player out on the West Side that just showed up because, you know, TGZ happened to be open next to, down the street from their house, you know? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Cool. All right. Well, that was a lot. We talked about, what are we talking about today? 2XKO. We talked about uh, Arizona events. Um, and then... And on the horizon, how much here, you love like, duos? Oh, yeah. how much I love duos! And again, <laughs> yes, I want to be explicit here, and that like the game is not bad. The game, like I don't like the game because I don't like versus games, but the game is not bad. The game is very good, um, and I'm, the people that do enjoy it, I hope you keep enjoying it. Uh, but fuck that game. <laughs> I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna play it after, later tonight, probably. So like, I'm, it's still gonna. This this is this is literally Marvel, or like people had such a love hate relationship with Marvel, where a lot of players they would love playing it, they would hate watching it because they hate the game. <laughs> but yeah. if you can if you can land that mix up, oh man, that's that like that makes everything worth it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, cool. I think that's a great note. Yep. Any shout outs on the way out here, guys? Uh, Maynard, you want to go first? I just love the Arizona community, guys. Thank you for all coming. Uh, having the biggest uh, secret labs that I've hosted yet, 29 players. Um, that's a ton of fun. I, I enjoy you guys, and I hope we can keep growing and uh, keep playing the games we love. Nice. What about you, Freezy? Um, same thing with Maynard. Thank you um, for the community. It's it's amazing. <laughs> and also, shout-outs to my mom. She's amazing. Today's are actually... <clears throat> today's actually her first day of nursing school nice congratulations that's awesome yeah, congrats yeah that's awesome uh, i love i love to see i love to see parents being supportive of video games because coming from where i came from it was always just like you're wasting your time and i'm just like <laughs> leave me alone let me play my games <laughs> but also like uh Okay. I got it. I got it. So you know how we we have a nickname for for Brandy's mom, Native Wolf's mom. We call her Mama Wolf. Yeah. For Freezy, yeah. we should call her Queen Cold. <laughs> <laughs> like, mom, like, mom, like Dragon Ball. Uh, my mom already has a Twitch account called Mama Freezy. <laughs> oh, oh nice. yeah, from like over oh, a year awesome. ago. <laughs> oh, that's so that awesome. means she can like a chat in your a chat yeah, and then watch. Yeah, that yeah. was when you were playing platform fighters, right? Yeah, yeah. She would be able to talk in the Twitch chat. Cause I would be on stream and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Ah, that's, that's yeah. I'll stick with Mama Freezy then. Can't you gotta, you gotta preserve the username? So yeah, that's awesome. That's just part of school. Yeah. No, I was yeah. gonna. Well, that was the one thing I was gonna say too. Was like, yeah, since our last few episodes, I actually had another flight lesson in the first time in like a month last week. <laughs> nice. And now that, that was awesome. So like, yeah, I basically did like my second solo flight. Uh, gonna have more of those coming up next week. So yep, very cool. That's awesome. Actually, yeah, I wanted to post that to you benny is like we always ask our guests about shout outs but like do you have any shout outs this week uh just just my family my wife my kids like it's actually gonna be our anniversary this weekend or this uh this friday uh we're gonna have a family dinner tomorrow to kind of celebrate all together since uh since everybody's off that's nice. nice yeah so yeah been married 21 years <laughs> longer than freezing the board <laughs> 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 yeah cool well uh i hope that next next show isn't like isn't another two weeks from now we're gonna try to sh try to shoot for next week again um but we'll see how my work schedule pans out um uh, but anyway you can find us or wait this has been the absolute guard podcast episode 89 with john benny and freezy you can find us on twitch at twitch.tv slash spiral series youtube at youtube.com slash spiral series and wherever you get your podcasts under absolute guard that's what they say they say wherever you get your podcast <laughs> so i don't even have to i don't even have to name drop the products anymore have a good night everyone and we'll see you next week have a good night later guys Wait, what happened with Maynard? I don't know. I... <laughs>
Or John, uh, Benny, and Freezy. Yeah, A for <laughs> Oh, shit! Oh, no! Ah! <laughs> 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 it's okay. It's okay. Just I fix it. Gonna it's happen. fine. Keep it in. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I was like... <laughs> I was looking at Vayner's uh, camera, and I'm like, oh, God, no. Ah... <laughs> uh...